Ladies and gentlemen, welcome today, this afternoon, um, to the workshop Probabilistic Demonstrability with Pius. My name is Dow Pluckel. Um, topics I would like to discuss today um, are the increased complexity of probabilistic demonstrability and calculation times. Tips and tricks, and if possible, a Q&A section. Um, when I rehearsed this presentation uh, yesterday, I found out that it's quite a long presentation. Um, so, well, if you have a question um, related to the topic I'm dealing with, please ask them. Otherwise, um, leave them for the Q&A uh, section. Um, if I don't have the time to answer questions directly, then we will come back to this. Um, in the next couple of days, I will make a handout of this uh, presentation and uh, that will be sent uh, to all of you. The, in oh, that's the slide I forgot, which I already told. Increased complexity in calculation times. <clears throat> Coming from SOLAS 1992, the SOLAS 2009 and the uh, amendments 2014 to 2020, already meant extra calculation time. Um, and since the SOLAS 2009, nothing much really has changed. Uh, we all, or at least we, but uh, I assume you too, um, experienced longer calculation time, more calculations to be made. Um, how is that possible? Well, implementation and interpretation of the regulations uh, have become more and more strict, not only by classification societies, but also by you and us too. An example, progressive flooding. The, the regulations state if five dark tunnels are situated within the uh, assumed extent of damage, blah, 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 blah. Well, progressive flooding has to be taken into account. In the past, it was generally accepted that only a big palace pipe had to be taken into account. Small progressive flooding, well, was a bit ignored. Um, other examples, it was allowed to calculate stability only to the side of the heel. Nowadays, we have to calculate stability both to both port side and starboard. Minor damages were considered in a coarse manner, uh, and now we have more advanced ship designs which leads to asymmetrical models with need to calculate both starboard and port side. I remember when I started working uh, at SARC 50 years ago, more than half of the calculations I did were only calculated to one side wheel because the vessel was assumed to be symmetrical. Slope bulkheads, added hull forms, etc., and above all, more detailed drawings uh, are available in the modern designs. Well, um, which cannot be ignored. If if you send a drawing to classification society with even the smallest pipes, etc., they can't simply ignore it. Well, it should be okay. And they say, well, proof that it's not uh, a big influence on uh, calculations. Well, the effect calculations get more complicated, a lower attained index in general. And the designer must take extra effort in order to gain back the loss in the attained index. How can uh, he or she do that? Uh, more iterations in the pre-design, uh, more damage cases to be calculated in, in the hope to rise the attained uh, index. By more advanced ship designs, uh, also the pious models are getting um, more detailed, more frames, more frame points, etc. 50 years ago, I was uh, the input of model was done by 20, maybe 40 frames digitized from a bitmap. Uh, nowadays, all frames will simply be imported from a 3D DBT model. This all leads to uh, increased calculation time and effort. Well, since we're not only developing software, but we also use it, I'm not a uh, programmer, I, uh, I'm a user of the software, um, we are facing the same issues as you. And luckily, we are lazy people, or at least I'm a lazy people, I don't want to uh, speak in that way uh, to my colleagues. 
so we try to keep up and develop new functionalities and mechanisms to be able to calculate to calculate those um, aspects uh, and try to reduce the time one has to spend on the calculations uh, on it him or herself. Let the computer do the hard work and the boring work, as Herbert mentioned this morning. What have we done to make life easier? We have the ability to define more complex compartment connections. Uh, that's something I will come back in the tips and tricks uh, section. Calculation of demonstrability to both starboard port side, uh, more advanced automatic generation of minor damages. And it's only small detail, but the intermediate results can now be reached within Pius without the need to browse through all the files, search for the PD0 file, and open that with a text editor. Most of these developments um, have been done as free updates. So they, if you have, to, uh, if you have the, the option with uh, updates and support, those are free for you. Um, this has led to enhanced accuracy, but unfortunately also longer calculation times. Um, so what have we done to reduce calculation times? We have developed multi-threaded, and that can be dual, octo, or fidelity threading, calculation of the optimizing of the damage boundaries. Optimizing damage boundaries of the, the damage cases you are calculating for probabilistic damage stability is quite a big portion of the calculation time. Uh, I think it might be up to one third of the total calculation time. The chronically of the calculations, uh, especially with multi-threaded, it's uh, wise to start with the more difficult damage uh, cases to be calculated. Because we had in the past um, that almost the whole calculation was finished and there was only one thread running with one damage case, which took another three hours or so. So now we start with those damage cases and we end with a simple one so that all, in our case, all 20 threads are used. Um, it's just development with, which has been implemented, I think, now or last week or next week, is the multi-threaded calculation of stability in general. Um, we're not there yet. Aspects that likely have to be considered in the near future. Uh, more detailed progressive flooding calculations. Um, progressive flooding, inc including the time calculation. Um, so a normal progressive flooding, a connection of compartments, is now simply um, considered, but in the future we will have to make the, the time calculation also. Calculation of pressure heights, pipes and closing devices. Um, now we would have to generate a special point, print the distance below the waterline, etc. That can be automated. Uh, more detailed calculation for cross flooding calculations, and this is quite a, a recent uh, subject. Not only calculation of cross flooding um, times for select, selected critical damage cases, but all damage cases which you would like to contribute to the A. Five years ago, I had to do such a calculation and I only took the two compartments which were connected. I made a cross flooding calculation in the time domain. Happy sailing, they approved it. A year ago, I had to do the same, but now I had to select from the probabilistic damage stability calculation, damage cases which had cross flooding uh, connection. And I made a selection of the five most critical damage cases. I did the cross flooding calculation for that. Happy sailing approved. Um, recently, we heard from a client who I advised to do this calculation um, that not a selection of uh, damage cases uh, were needed, but all damage cases which they wanted to contribute to A. And not only calculation of cross flooding at the end uh, or the start and the end of cross flooding, but also the intermediate stage of cross flooding, including the S value. And well, the lowest hash value has to be used for that uh, calculation. At the moment, this means extensive manual labor. You have to pick all the damage cases from prop them, uh, convert them to loading, uh, make cross folding calculations, etc. etc. The piping module, what Herbert uh, discussed this morning, 
uh, will well take these aspects into account on a detailed level. Uh, as Herbert said, it's now in its testing phase, um, but new features keep on coming to be added to this functionality. Uh, until two weeks ago, I didn't realize that we had to not only calculate cross-flowing time at start and the end, but also intermediate stages, including the calculation of the uh, survivability. So that is something we have to implement again. This module will really be a major step forward. And um, a couple of years ago, I was a bit afraid that by introducing such a module, um, our clients would think, well, you made this module, so now we have to do those uh, calculations because well, of class notes that uh, you can calculate such thing, they want to see it. But luckily now, classification societies uh, ask for that uh, uh, demand at this moment. So now we have a solution for that rather than a new feature. Uh, um, well, since we're not making, uh, we're making software not only for our own use, uh, but also for our clients, uh, we are interested in your experience on increased complexity of the calculations and increased um, calculation times. Do you face problems like the ones mentioned earlier? What are these problems? How do you deal with these problems? Uh, and what could there be done to solve these problems? And it is important to let us know. Uh, we want peers to be able to calculate what is needed. So are there any topics that you um, experience where, for instance, bias would not be fully capable of calculation or processes to be made different? So that they would be more automatic, automated generated? Yes? One experience that I had is that sometimes we would start with a simplified model, and then we start to develop this model as a project. As a model. Mm -hmm. But it has happened that by updating the layout of the model, I lose only the definitions on compatible connections. I'm not sure if that's something that I've done wrong, or if that's a limitation too. Nah, the, the connections are stored to the compartments themselves. Um, so, for instance, if you throw away a compartment and make a new compartment, it doesn't recognize it. So, uh, I think, but maybe Fido, do you know if, if you did that, then possibly you could change the compartment and then the compartment connection will be stored, I think? Or? Yeah, it'll still be there. Yeah, so then, then you really would. Um, need to uh, well change that specific compartment. But I'm a bit afraid that you always have to do the rechecking to make sure if every connection uh, is still in order. And I can imagine that, well, changing and updating the model uh, would also mean updated uh, compartment connections. What was curious to me is that I ended up losing all the connections. Yeah, okay. I was wondering if that, uh, that's the way it's. Now, as I said, if you if you um, really make changes to a compartment, it should should keep its its connections. But this this answer is a bit a bit hard to to uh, or this question is a bit hard to answer if I haven't seen the model. So if you experience something in the future, please contact us. Then we can have a look and advise you on uh, how, how 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 best to proceed with uh, such things. Anyone else? Yes. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, 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 Jan van der Zee was first. Oh, uh, yeah, I saw you. You were you were uh, Yeah, about this increased complexity in time. Yeah. Uh, we have one part of it, so we have an extreme example. With the calculation time with two weeks or something like that. Mm -hmm. And with seven stability problems to be made. It's quite crazy, but uh, I, I was just wondering. Well, in the past we discussed about the numerical configuration. Uh, yeah, well, I will come back to that later. It's, it's, it's a special uh, topic. Curious yeah. stages. Okay, so well, then uh, in half an hour or something like that. Um, and then another thing is uh, about negative damage cases. Because, you know, we have some discussions in class about that. And 
there's also in person there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and about crypto statements, is it? Yes! <laughs> I have to think of, of the topics because I didn't receive any information, so I made right choices. Thank you. I will also deal with some of the aspects of, of speed because this was a bit more on the complexity of the calculations. Um, I, I will also come with some tips and tricks to, well, Make it as fast as possible. Basically, basically, it has no choice. <laughs> no, but perhaps you have, 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 have had some, some changes with, 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 with the multi threading. I, I believe that you have purchased. Uh, we are preparing. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, but I, I had a discussion with you. And there were some issues at some point. What was it about? Uh, um, well, it has to do. It had to do with the uh, new definition, and somehow it was uh, uh, with the subscription of the minor damage. It took a long time, and I I I screwed up. Yeah, that that that's why it's uh, so. It's possible. Yeah, so that, that that's important if you really experience. Some strange behavior or whatsoever, please contact us. I can't promise we, we can solve it right away, but sometimes it can be solved. Because not, not, we don't experience, we don't always experience, uh, have the same experience as, as you. So that's why the input of you uh, is quite, uh, quite important. Yeah? Well, we location of the pipe connection within the compartment connection. Currently, those locations are not stored when the compartment connection is not selected. So if you turn off a compartment connection, it yeah. has this pipe with it. Yeah, I, I, I think I saw an email uh, yeah. about that from you or maybe yeah. someone else. So that, 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 that is noted in our ticket system. At, uh, We'll see if we can find a solution. For that. I, a lot of time. I can, uh, can imagine. Anyone else? Okay, then I would like to continue. <clears throat> um, since developments like piping will also lead to longer calculation times, uh, we are always trying to find ways to speed up the calculations or at least automate the process uh, as much as possible. <clears throat> Future developments to deal with these increasing calculation times. Um, well, we are exploring the possibilities to combine calculation of starboard, port side, and uh, additional trims, if applicable, in one go. This has the advantage that sometimes I start a calculation, go home, and in the morning when I come back, I see that the calculation has finished at 11 in the evening. So, the, for instance, if I started starboard calculation, port side could have been done as well at the same time. Um, and the same would, would be applicable for additional trims. And that would even save the calculation of the light subdivision draft, which always has the same uh, trim uh, value. Uh, so that could save some time or at least speed up the process. Um, possibility to recalculate only one draft. For instance, if for one draft the uh, taint index is lower than 70% of the required, you could try to investigate to um, well to see what's needed for that uh, for that damage case or that draft to to, uh, to comply um, showing the attained index during calculations and uh, perhaps implementing a setting which just stops the calculation as soon as the attained index has reached the required um, Storing intermediate results to be, yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit uh, um, <laughs> results to be printed when using the reuse 
unmodified, unmodified results of former calculations. I will come back to the to the reuse of unmodified results from former calculations, so then it will be a bit more clear. I was wondering if anybody uses the option reuse the modified unmodified results after the day. <laughs> I'm going to. We experience lots of crashes and drop-down when we do not throw away all previous results. Then please, then, 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 yeah, then please do so because it works. It works fine, fine for us. And, and if you have problems with that, then that that would be something to be solved. So. We, we we always use that option, don't we? Most of the time, well, yes. Because it saves time. It saves a lot of time. Yeah, it, it, it indeed misses the intermediate results, right? Yeah. I, I, I will come come to back uh, come back to that subject a little bit later on, but. Uh, if you use that function, it will reuse, yeah, well, as it says, unmodified results from former calculations. Unfortunately, at the end, if you open the, the file with the intermediate results, it will make a statement that um, intermediate or, or results from, uh, from former calculations have been used, but it does not state what these values are. Mm -hmm. So if you want the intermediate uh, result file, you have to throw away all results from former calculation and have to do a recalculation. So we are uh, well exploring possibilities to keep the, the actual data to be used. So not not a recalculation have to be uh, made again. Well, I've had this a bit uh, in, in my last question. Do you have suggestion to speed up calculation times? But I think in my last uh, round. We've discussed with that. Okay, maybe now uh, for you, the most fun part. What can you do to reduce calculation time and increase the result? Uh, maybe in uh, open door, if that's the saying in English. Uh, make sure that all input data is correct. It's very annoying that after a calculation, you find out that a small detail was wrong. Don't just guess which GM values are needed. And this is a very, 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 very important point. Avoid added hull forms and external defined compartments. Uh, yeah, determining damage boundaries based on coordinates of compartments is fast. You only have a couple of corners, coordinates, which have to be, well, searched by Papias to, to define the um, intrusion of a damage case. And for uh, an external defined uh, shape, you have a lot of frame points, you have a lot of frame locations, so it really takes a lot of time. Now, is there also a difference in speed when you use the numerical coordinates for compartments or use the uh, low head and the next stuff like that? No. Sorry? What well, is that about the first one on the slide? Yeah, the top one. Yes. The determining damage boundaries based on coordinates. Yeah, coordinates. But but if you use the bulkhead function, then automatically the, the, the corners of a compartment will also be trans translated to, to coordinates. So you only have the coordinates, the corners of the compartment. For external defined hull form or compartment, yeah, well, you use the frame, so it, it has it has to in, uh, how do you say it, uh, interpolate. Well, anyways, it takes takes a lot, a lot of time. Consider to remodel the PIs model with uh, out external defined compartments and added hull forms for probabilistic damage calculation. I can imagine that for normal stability calculations, it, it's a it's a great way to do. Uh, but simplifying such a model. Um, we have reduced calculation time from over a week to a day. There was a vessel with, with added sponsons, uh, some other external shapes, etc. We just remodeled it, took us a day, and then the calculation uh, was done in one day. So we saved uh, at least five days because when uh, it had calculated for over a week, we still didn't have any uh, result. Small question. Yeah. Does it also make a difference to uh, the reducing of the 
French in, in your name? Yeah, but but the, the, then I don't think in a week or a day, but it, indeed it, it would save. Sometimes I see models with, with on each, every frame, they have a frame and they have 100 points or even more. It's not wrong, but it's it's also not necessary. I mean, with, with, with lesser frames, with lesser coordinates, you get the same result. It can have a significant impact. Yeah, because sometimes I know that people <clears throat> um, have, have imported it. I'm, I'm, I'm not very uh, very wise with, 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 with how to cut, etc. Uh, but they, 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 they did just um, translate the model to a bias model uh, with a lot of points. And then I think you should consider defining only the most important frames which are necessary. Discussion that it's not important It's not a week calculation time or a day calculation time, but every little thing helps. And we need to know if we need to uh, use every little uh, tips. Depends on the model. With which model? This model. <laughs> This model, what I said, this had sponsons as extended uh, hull forms. Uh, it had a moon pool. It had, and, and a colleague of mine, I, I think he spent a day on it. Because what we had to do, you had the normal form, you had extended hull form, so we just need to add that to the normal frame sections. Um, and, and that saved really a lot of time in calculation. So you could really could consider, if you have a difficult model, nothing wrong for index stability calculations, etc. But it would save a lot of time for probabilistic to uh, simplify your model. And after all, it is a model uh, to perform calculations. And I don't think that the result will decrease or etc. Uh, um, very much. Um, what can you do more to reduce uh, Calculation times. Make sure all input data are the over the loop. Use the re, uh, use of unmodified results from former calculations. There's this one. Uh, in order to increase computation speed, <clears throat> this functionality stores quite some results of former calculations. Uh, and when you have to recalculate, it uses the data instead of having to recalculate it. And that really makes uh, calculations much, much faster. Uh, already discussed a little bit. Um, if you need the intermediate uh, files with result, uh, intermediate result file, then you have to um, uh, yeah yeah. The, the, but when you require compl uh, complete intermediate data, this option should not be used. Or you can throw away the results from former calculations. So normally what I do, if I have a couple of iterations, I have my first calculation, um, then I do the second, third, fourth, fifth calculation. If, if well, calculations are okay, then I throw away all the intermediate results and do one full recalculation. So at least I have the file with the intermediate results. So may yeah. I, add, may I add one thing to that? Yes, sure. The reason that you do that is that because we are talking about two, files with intermediate results. And the reason you do that is because that for that, that, that it gives a complete uh, re for a human being readable overview of all the details and intermediate results. So you're not doing this for the for the program, also not for the speed, only to produce a file which is completely readable for a human being. Yeah. That's the whole idea. And that is I think very useful when you <coughs> submit the calculation. <coughs> Classification side. Yeah, well, classification side. You always. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't say it, but. <laughs> no, joking. Um, yeah, well, here we see the function remove all results of former calculations. Uh, don't start with too many compartment damages. Um, sometimes I want a high result, so I select a long damage length, a lot of compartments. Uh, then in the end, I will see that for the nine or ten damage uh, compartment damages, 
I have no contribution to to A anymore. Um, so it's a waste of time. So start with a medium amount of the compartment damage cases, and you can easily add damage later on. And I will discuss that more in the tips and tricks. Uh, preferably, but not for everyone, this would this would be uh, possible. Install the code meter files and program files locally at a dedicated fast computer used for probabilistic damage stability. Um, if the code meter dongle is inserted in a network uh, and there is a network hiccup and the calculation stops, then you automatically lose quite some time, which can be really frustrating. Turn off Windows updates. The number of times that I came to the office, anxious to see what's to be sold, black screen. Not funny. We do, however, implement it a couple of years ago because I was quite annoyed by that. That especially when the, the, the calculation was already finished, but the computer crashed or Windows update, and then uh, automatically all the, the results were lost. Now we have made that once the calculate, uh, calculation is finished, it stores all the results. So even then when a the computer crashes or a Windows updates decide to uh, update, you still have the result. So that's that's also a... Uh, yeah. You just made it for yourself. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. Guido made it for me. Guido made it for me, but we are we are nice people, so we made it available for everyone. <laughs> it's it's not an, an extra module you have to uh, buy or something like that. Sorry. The convenient module. Yeah. Well, try multi-threading if if you uh, if you haven't already. And of course, then on dedicated hardware, because on a computer with only one core, it, it has no use to use virginity threading. Uh, and well, not finally, but uh, if you, when you have the need to perform multiple calculation in short term, you need a lot of do uh, iteration, uh, calculation, whatever. Uh, you could rent additional temporary problem licenses or try the uh, multi-threading uh, licenses to speed up the process or consult us for extra uh, calculation capacity. In the past, um, we have uh, done calculations for a client. They just submitted the files ready to be pressed on to calculate. Um, we have quite a fast computer, and of course we charge a little for that, uh, but that saved them a lot of time. We also um, experimented with that same external computer, uh, which you can rent for a month or something like that. And you can, uh, with remote access, you can access the computer and perform uh, probably some damage stability calculations. It's not something we have already on our price list, but if, if the need would arise, please contact us because we can uh, start it up again. Um, Try the numerical integration method for probabilistic damage stability calculations. Um, I will go more in detail in the tips and tricks. But it's easier to implement, faster, more accurate, less arbitrary, and less equation than prescriptions. Unfortunately, not yet commonly used and accepted, but there we need to start using it, uh, send it to classification society to get this commonly used and accepted. For this part, because now I'm going to the tips and tricks sections, Questions for this part or remarks? No? Um, as I said, we haven't received any questions for pockets for this part um, of the presentation on beforehand. If you do have questions which you would like to uh, be dealt with, uh, Please raise them. Well, a lot of them came already and they're in the presentations. Um, the following tips and tricks are based on, because I had to decide for themselves, uh, for, for myself, commonly asked questions, recent developments, things I sometimes see users getting wrong, basic but important enough to discuss. Our own experience, not said, uh, not being said the only truth. Um, 
we find ways on how to calculate certain aspects and they got accepted by class, but sometimes from clients I hear complete other stories. Um, <clears throat> the selection of topics I would like to discuss are, well, the preparations in Huldev layout and loading, and then more details of them. And I think we have time to do them all. Um, Huldev, the particulars for Solas, Chapter 2, Part B1, Subdivision Length for Aft Station and Permeabilities, and the Vertical Escape Hedges. The subdivision length and the position of the aft terminal. Uh, subdivision length uh, ship is the greatest project the mold length of that part of the ship at or below deck, or decks limiting the vertical extent of flooding where the ship can keep the subdivision draft. In this section, define the position of the most aftward station of the subdivision length and make sure you have defined a frame at this position. Normally for calculations, it's not really necessary to define the most aftward frame and the most forward frame because they don't really contribute in stability. Uh, but in this case, it contributes to the length which is used to calculate the probability of damage cases. Well, if that's the situation for the aftward station, then of course it's all uh, also valid for the most forward frame. So the first picture is correct. I made a tiny little frame to add the extra 25 centimeters to the front. Oh, and the second picture is, well, incorrect. You lose a little bit of length, which is, well, a waste of your uh, taint index. The light surface draft, subdivision draft, uh, which you can enter here in Uldev, are linked to the ones you use in probabilistic demonstrability module. So if you change them there, they will also change here, and vice versa. Um, the permeability, which you can set, uh, fixed permeability or uh, according SOLAS, uh, which you can set here in Huldev, is only valid for loading and hydro tables. So this allows you, when you want to recreate a damage case, that it also takes into account, for instance, the change in permeability of a dry cargo hold in the deterministic uh, demonstrability calculation. Um, <clears throat> in problem prop done, it's 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 of course the the default. Then yeah, well this is this is basics. Number of persons for light boat provided can be entered here too. Um, special points. We already had the uh, point of horizontal evacuation route. The horizontal evacuation route is a point which may not be submerged in the final stage of flooding, but in the intermediate stages of flooding, it is allowed that, that, uh, that such a point gets submerged. The vertical escape hatch is a point that uh, may not be submerged in, in final or intermediate stages. Um, we used to uh, create such a point by just defining a weather tight point, which, which had the same effect. If it got submerged, then, then it would say, well, the vessel would comply. But we got a lot of questions from class, how do you deal with this? That has the same effect. And well, we were, uh, well, we decided to implement a special point, a vertical escape hatch, not um, to uh, get wrong with the emergency exit. The emergency exit is for uh, inland waterway vessels. It's uh, for the AF, yeah, well, they, they have, they have a uh, stability criteria for the emergency exit. Uh, confused, that wasn't what I was looking for. Um, the nice thing of having a dedicated vertical escape hatch is not only that we have a better tight opening, which has the same effect, but in the output of the intermediate results, uh, it's also mentioned. So it's the minimum uh, root clearance of either the horizontal or vertical escape hatches. <coughs> Well, in this output, what you see here, the evacuation with clearance is the minimum distance of all horizontal either vertical escape route. So it, it takes the minimum distance for, for both of the points. Yeah, okay. So I did. 
Yeah. Not to be. Uh, it's not about the proof of escape cats. It's not about the escape route. Both. They're both. both taken into account, yes. So okay. now that the minimum distance of either a vertical escape edge or a horizontal, we, we, we consider them together to be an escape route, which is in fact. One question about yep. this vertical escape edge. How, how do you use it, this kind of point? For example, in layout, I define uh, an escape edge as a special point. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was thinking about again defining it as a particular escape edge because, because it cannot be connected to a compartment. No, it cannot be connected to a compartment. So I, I believe that, that you can e only uh, select it in Hulbert. Yes, but then uh, such an edge could be defined uh, two ways, let's say, or how, how to deal with it. I, I don't really get the question because, to, to my opinion, it's, it's just a vertical escape edge, and it doesn't matter to which compartment it's connected because, um, and then that, that, that's maybe the difference between a weathertight opening. Besides, you, you could define a weathertight opening and not connecting it, connecting it to a compartment, because if it is connected to a compartment and that compartment is damaged, the opening is not taken is not taken into account, and or in real vertical escape hatches, they don't say, well, if, 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 if the compartment is flooded, then, uh, well, they, they, there's no need for them to, uh, to escape. <laughs> so so you, have, you have to define it in HullDev, and you can print, print the list of yeah, openings yeah. In, in, from HullDev, and then, it, then it's listed, but it's not connected to a compartment, which is in line with, with the mechanism. Yeah. How new is the option in HullDev? Sorry? The vertical escape hatch is an option in HullDev. Yeah, if you press special points, then you get uh, one, two years. Really? I wrote down a note that this option is not available <coughs> in all that, but they are in layout. And that's something I noticed within the last two weeks. So I'm a bit confused now. Send an email. I, 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 I heard uh, something about that before. But I believe we fixed that, so perhaps it's, it's still... Well, you already have the model. Okay, well, send, send, send me a quick a quick reminder, and uh, yeah. Yeah, but, but, but then I have to, to recreate yeah. your software again. But what you see here, I, I, this is a print screen of what I get when I press special points in, in Huldev. So it should be available, and it should also be available for you. Um, but, well... Okay, well, Casimir has made a note of it, or he is going to do it now. I'm going to search about it, because if, if that's not the case, then that would typically be a, uh, a bug which needs to be solved. Any questions regarding the, the whole dev part? Then I would like to continue with layout. Again, open door, but make sure you have defined compartments correctly without uh, overlap or missing parts and the correct use of the permeability. I'm going to show you how to view overlapping compartments, compare the internal and external geometry, and how to select the type of space for cellars. Um, in the graphical user interface of layout, <coughs> you can select there with view, uh, you go to compartment colors and then you can select either a uniform, which gives all the compartments the same color, individual or weight group, or the compartment overlap. If you use the latter, then uh, you can see the compartments which are overlapping drawn red, which is quite convenient uh, to see if you have any. The internal external geometry which shows both overlapping compartments and a lack of compartments, can be reached from the uh, print compartment input data. And then you press the difference between the internal and external ge geometry, which gives you this graph. And it should be a flat liner. Minor deviations are well allowed, but this, this definitely is, is a gap, or, or in this case, an overlapping compartment. Uh, you can imagine 
Popdom uses the whole hull, including all the compartments. If you have defined uh, compartments double, uh, it works for the result. Um, and simply not correct. Yeah. Yeah. This internal external form as well. Like, it's not always clear to me. It's an option, right? Yeah, I believe so. I believe it's a setting. Yeah. Oh. But yeah. But uh, have you made a note of that? Because all these questions will will also be answered in detail uh, in a couple of days. Uh, it's a good question, but I'm not 100% sure, but 99.9% sure. Yeah, yeah it is, I believe it's a setting. If you can include, exclude the... Yeah. What in the way? No, yeah, and it can make a difference. <laughs> uh, the... Well, the type of space for uh, solar compartments can be set here. Uh, I selected machinery space, which isn't the best best example because machinery space has full mobility of uh, 85%. But a dry cargo hold has different permeabilities uh, along the drafts. So you can set it here. Any questions regarding this? Yeah? Balance will be different supply? Yeah, I think so. But, but to be honest, I only mention dry cargo space, stores, and machine space, and the rest is just undefined. When it's undefined, it uses the normal permeability for, well, in this case, hemispheric. But please think of the stores, because there are only permeability of 60%. Mm -hmm. So if I see paint store, I see such a luma, the 60%. Um, continuing with uh, loading. Uh, determining the GM values to be used <clears throat> and creating a light, partial, and deepest subdivision draft condition for investigating certain damage cases. What I tend to do, <clears throat> this is not bias, this is just Excel. Uh, I make a graph, insert all impact loading conditions. I insert the drafts to be used for probabilistic and the GM values I want to use. And this gives a nice overview on how much reserve you have uh, when you use certain GM values. Um, I think that's, that's a more smooth way to, to start a calculation instead of just think of some GM, uh, GM values. Um, if you want to investigate certain damage cases uh, in loading, you can easily create a light, partial, and uh, deep subdivision draft by making new loading condition, press advice, enter the draft, trim, and GM values, and you have a loading condition with no compartments, but uh, correct displacement. Finally, we're getting to drop down. Um, I would like to discuss the applied regulations, calculation method, probability, flooding, and configuration. The setting probability of damage never negative, yes or no. Maximum damage length, number uh, damage compartments, draft trims and GM values, compartment connections, and the new damage case menu. Um, well, starting with the applied regulations, uh, new are the new SOLAS 2020, uh, most significant change, race of um, Stability requirements for passenger vessels and roro vessels. And in case of cross flooding arrangement for cargo vessels, the cylinders now does introduce intermediate stages of flooding. Um, the SPS code always stated that the SOLAS as amended was to be used. So for a short while, <laughs> we are now already leaving. <laughs> um, we, you, we made a setting, if it was an SDS ship, you could choose between the SOLAS 2020 to calculate the, the, the required index or the 2009. Um, but then we got the new SPS code and there it was not stated SOLAS as amended, but they written down the formula to calculate the required index of the SOLAS 2009. So we removed that option again. If you still have that option, it means you have an old version of uh, problem. 
dan update. Um, yeah, calculation method, probability of flooding. Um, always a difficult one. We have, I will, I will give a simplified explanation on this because I, otherwise I could spend, uh, well, this whole presentation on this. Uh, we have the one damage per zone method, the one damage per compartment, then, uh, and then sub compartment method, and the numerical integration method. The one damage per zone, um, well, zone uh, portion of the vessel, it, it's, it's not very accurate. Mostly it's, it's quite a rough uh, layout of the vessel, <clears throat> and it will produce a less accurate result. It's funny. Uh, it is part from a manual. It says it's funny to see that zonal conception is rather popular. I don't think it's funny at all. Um, we got a lot of questions from classification society. You have to use a zonal method because it says the zones, blah, 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 blah. Um, but however, in the solar 2009 term, zone and compartment are rectangled. Um, as you can see here, the words compartment and group of compartments should be understood to mean zone and adjacent zones. So when classification society says that, that the one damage per compartment method is incorrect, we don't agree with that. And I will explain why. One damage per zone. Zonal boundaries must be defined manual. In general, this will be a rough layout. Um, oh, yeah, rough layout. And when the one damage per subcompartment, with this mechanism, Pius uses the boundaries of compartments or subcompartments to determine the zonal boundaries for the calculation. It's an automated process. Um, if one would define all the boundaries of compartments as zonal boundaries, the zonal method and the one damage per compartment method would have the same result, more or less. This is an example of one damage per zone in which I made a course, uh, zonal definition, this was one zonal boundary, this was one zonal boundary. Now the program will make a two compartment damage case of it, because it doesn't have the information of the other one. And in general, you will not define a day tank or whatsoever in your zonal boundary definition. Um, with the example of one damage per compartment, it just uses the boundaries of compartments. And as you can see, it will first define this uh, intrusion for, for this damage case. Uh, but this is a one compartment damage case. And after optimizing, it will make this fit. So it's, so it's optimizing the, um, the penetration depths to get the largest probability of uh, occurrence. Uh, I saw that I forgot to insert the slide um, for the subcompartment method. If we have the subcompartment method, this, this blue compartment is built up of a subcompartment here and a subcompartment there. With a subcompartment method, it would even make a uh, damage case which really follows that line. So I, I tend to normally use the, the, the one damage per compartment, but the one damage per subcompartment would even be uh, a bit more detailed. <clears throat> so, as you hopefully understand, the, the one damage per subcompartment does not differ much from the zonal method. Uh, the layout is determined automatically, a higher accuracy, thus a higher in, uh, attained index, and in general, we use the one damage per compartment method. Um, and I think with, well, the explanation I just gave, you should convince classification society if they uh, have comments on that. <clears throat> what is your experience on accepting the one damage per subcompartment method? Are you using it or are you using sonal method? I'm interested. People who use the sonal method, hands, please. And the one damage per compartment method? Great. Don't get me wrong, nothing wrong with the solo method, uh, but it, it just means more manual defining the boundaries, uh, and you will get a slight less higher accurate or attained index. But if your vessel lies with that, it, it's fine. But um, I'm glad to see that most of you are using the one damage per compartment. Um, for your own benefit, 
please don't just switch to zonal method if classification societies don't understand the mechanism. Um, as said with the earlier mentioned explanation, you should be able to uh, convince them that it's a valid calculation method. We can do it. Now, a presentation uh, about the numerical integration method. It's a presentation Herbert made, so I hopefully I presented in a correct manner. If if not, then uh, please uh, interrupt me. I'm obsessed by pictures of females. Oh yeah. Suppose we are faced with the dotted task determining area of this Marilyn Monroe picture. The methods from 1960, simplification and arithmetic, subdivide the figure in five areas, call them zones. Circle, triangle, rectangular, an inclined rectangular, and an ellipse. And then find a handbook with formulas of areas from these elementary shapes. And I believe this is from Herbert's personal library or Actually, it's for my father. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I thought, well, this, this, this is a bit too old, even for Herbert. Um, elaborate detailed rules on mapping the shapes, figure, inclining, the age ratio, blah, blah, blah. Tediously write, oh, tediously write computer code, which scales, locates the shapes of the picture. Determine those shapes parameters, compute areas from the equation of the second step. Or count non black pixels. I'm not a programmer, but I can understand this piece of coding. It's much easier, well, I said it before, easier to implement, faster, more accurate, less arbitrary, less equation and prescriptions, cons. It says a question mark, but I think it's, it's, it, we need to use it more to get it more accepted um, and then hopefully got accepted by class. That's the only corner I could uh, think of. Um, fixed damage limits, aft, forward, penetration from waterline with inclined in a boundary upper with one damage per compartment zone. But if we have this example, <coughs> We can have three distinct damages. Uh, yeah, I, I, I was too much bother to, to make a, a hatch, so I only took the outline. This is the second one, this is the third one. It's not very realistic and artificially reducing computed probability of survival. And here we can determine off boundary, forward boundary, but what would be the penetration from waterline? Solution numerical integration. Um, divide compartment into the thousand of cuboid voxels, uh, like, like we have had, count the black pixels, only these are uh, gray pixels. Um, matches compartment shape accurately, no presumption on damage shapes, more accurate computation, and it matches IMO's damage statistics fully. Um, conceived 2004, presented 2006, uh, and in Pius since 2005. Um, in the handout I will send later, uh, there are some download links to um, <clears throat> get these uh, publications. And now, uh, is ready available in Pius, fully documented? Uh, oh. If you go one slide back, because this is interesting. Uh, this one or the yeah, this one, this one. Oh, sorry. Oh, the, yeah, this one. Because we came up with this method uh, 20 years ago, but we are not the only one. This, uh, this is a paper from Pierre van Kruger. He is a professor in Hamburg, and, and, and he he also invented. He calls it the Monte Carlo method. Uh, and he, here, and here, the second slide, he, he, he confirms that it was invented by Sarge, but I think he's proud of That's why you're interrupted. <laughs> It's not it's not a big invention. It's, it's, it's nothing special. It is obvious. It's obvious to do it in this way. And Kruger also all, also found out that it's obvious. And I'm very glad with that because now we are not the only one. Mm -hmm. Now it's established by a real professor. <laughs> a real professor. <laughs> but you are a real professor. So. Of course, I'm to be professor, but he's a real professor. 
So that was my explanation. Yeah, well, thank you for that. Um, as said, oh, it's, uh, it goes too fast. Uh, ready availability in bias fully documented. Uh, well, I said for regular subdivision, numerical integration yields the same results, which is no surprise, of course. But for more complex uh, subdivision, the numerical integration, the attained index will be somewhat higher, uh, simply because it's more accurate. Um, since it's not fully accepted, I can't make a calculation based on numerical integration method sent to the class and expect it to get it back approved. We normally use it for quick design studies. And um, well, then finally, we made uh, the, the conventional probabilistic demonstrative calculation for approval. But even if you would only use it for the same, uh, have a basic or quick design studies, uh, studies, it's a really fast method of calculation. The future, um, some classification society may be inclined to uh, accept this method. And for this purpose, we had a graduation student to investigate this, but well, unfortunately, he didn't finish the job before he left. Um, that is still lying on the shelf, but we are only continuing with that if there are people who want to uh, well, collaborate uh, on this with us. So you have the choice, uh, predictably, comfortably, discussions with classification society and a little bit of lower attained index, or choose for innovation, higher accuracy, less hocus pocus and a fast computation method. Um, and as said before, even if you just use it for quick study um, calculation, uh, it, it, it can also be a quite, uh, Good method. So the choice is 1916 or 2023. Though I earlier mentioned that it was actually 2005, but okay. Um, <clears throat> questions regarding this? Yeah. Yes, thanks. Um, do you think that with uh, numerical integration methods there, there are now there may be future problems with uh, the sensitivity of the calculation to the discretization methods? So problems related to Maybe that with classification society of the accuracy of the results based on how refined is your pixel. I, I would be amazed if there weren't any problems. There are always problems, even with the educational method. How do you think that's going to develop in the future? Uh, I'm not, not sure if you. Yeah, I, it's a bit, I think it's a bit difficult because we don't we have experience or it depends a bit on the, on the shape of the world, but we may talk quite some experiment with the, the density of the, of the network and by as using the network with, a, with an integration position on each and every block yeah. and, and each and every deck and also then one or two in the middle and there is a setting where you can make the network denser actually it doesn't matter so much <coughs> So uh, you use you setting zero, that means this, this, use this default, and that's because it's also the fastest. Yeah, and and and, and that's that's indeed it, it it's well I'm not saying trial and error, but but there's only one way to get really acquainted with this method, using and it. yeah, just using it, yeah, and and then yeah, by using it, I can imagine an angle bill cap or a curve bill cap. That it, that it might be for yeah, that they need an example for that. Right, thanks. Yeah. Anyone else? Yeah. You say that this method is faster. How yeah. much? They quantified it. To some extent, give or take. Four, five, 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 <laughs> Much. Yeah, and, and, and stuff, and the, the problem is when I, when I, Execute the calculation, I do it on an external computer. After a while, I see for the result. So I'm not going to wait for, for, for the answer. I'm not, not standing there with, with a stopwatch calculate how fast it is. I, I, I can make a test calculation. That, that, that might be a nice one to, to add in the, in the handout. We, uh, but then again, it's also really uh, depending yeah. on what kind of shape uh, of vessel you have. But you have to be. You can try. Oh, yeah, that's even better. That's even let them let us know. <laughs> <laughs> this is a partici participation. Uh, 
additional external components, you uh, you add up at least several from a week. Reduce it. That was yeah. one. That was one experience, but that was quite a complex, detailed vessel with, especially the the added spons on defined externally. I think that, that was a great because normally the the the, the outside of the hull. I'm not sure exactly how the mechanism worked, but but we made something so it doesn't have to go to all the, the points of the hull. But in this case, since it's an external hull shape, it had to do something. So that really saves saves some time. I think normally when you have, let's say, uh, external defined uh, sea chest bow thruster, that 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 won't won't save you from a week to one day. Also be in the online training. The online training regarding drop down is the level three one. Um, so I certainly would would not mention it in the uh, but the whole content of that training is still uh, yeah, yeah, but certainly we're going to mention it because it's it's also in our own benefit to let people know that this method exists. Yeah. Continue with the configurations. Um, it's very simple. If you, unless you have good reasons to deviate from the standards, uh, from the default settings, use the default settings. Um, they can be reached by uh, pressing default. So if you made a mess of it, press default and you are back to the default. Um, the probability of damage neg never negative, yes or no. Um, <clears throat> formula of the SOLAS uh, to calculate probability of a damage case allows negative probabilities. How to deal with this? We have uh, two options, or actually three. You can set the setting to yes or no. Uh, if we set it to yes, it simply turns every negative probability of a damage to zero. <coughs> if we set it to no, uh, which can lead to damage cave, uh, cases with a negative probability, then we take no further actions. Or we do the same, but remove the damage cases with a non-possibility of uh, damage. If we set it to yes, it simply turns every negative probability to zero. And to my opinion, it's question, uh, questionable whether this mechanism is in line with the SOLAS. Because then you just say, I have a negative chance. That's not convenient for me, so I just turn it to zero. On the other hand, a negative probability sh should not be possible. So there's also something to say to set it to zero. Um, we believe, but I'm not 100% sure that uh, other software packages like Napa uh, use this setting, simply turn it to zero. Can you explain uh, how it's possible? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> that's, that's the whole vector on itself, right? Um, if, if someone could explain that, then that would be Herbert's, but it will be quite a long story. So um, you have noted th th this question? Okay, then, then I, I try if we can make a summary, but, but it's just, just mathematical formulas, blah, 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 blah. Okay. We, have, we have made software for it, and I didn't make software for it. I am using it, and I know that it's, it exists. But it's not there. It's a bit strange. It's, yeah, apparently that, that's the case. And uh, well, we have different solutions to to deal with it. Um, advantages for the but when you have this setting, only one calculation is needed, and you have a higher attained index compared to calculation with damage cases with a non-positive probability of damage. Um, if we set this uh, setting to no and we take no further actions, damage cases with a non positive probability uh, can and likely will occur. It's according formula of SOLAS, and only one calculation is needed, but we have a significant lower attained index. 
If we set this to no, execute calculation and then remove the damage cases with the non-positive uh, probability of damage. And we have uh, a nice function for that. With this, in one go, all damage cases with a non-positive uh, probability of damage are removed. <clears throat> Since one is free to calculate any damage case that he or she wants, one may remove damage cases even the one with the non-positive probability of damage. But because the probability of damages also depend on probability of other damages, a recalculation is necessary. Um, and probably a couple of recalculations. Um, so the damage cases with non-positive uh, probability are deleted with the tip of remove the old damage case I just showed you. And then several recalculations are necessary to obtain the maximum result. So we do a recalculation, and again, there will be damage cases with a non -positive, positive probability of uh, damage. We will remove them again until the number of damage cases remains the same. It's according regulations, and it has, I believe, the highest attained index possible. Um, like I said before, maximum damage length and number of damage compartment. Um, don't start with exceptional long damage length or high number of damage compartments. Uh, um, you can always create additional damage case with this menu. Um, so in this example, I, I have uh, generated damage cases up to six compartments. With this functionality, I can add seven to nine compartment damage cases to this vessel. Um, it's also a nice thing that uh, with the aft boundary and forward boundary that, that can be set is, for instance, if you have the aft part of the vessel where you have a lot of compartments, small compartments, which are likely to survive, eh, then uh, a nine compartment damage case is not maybe not uh, that bad. You can also select for a part of the vessel uh, multiple compartment damage cases to be calculated. Well, this is uh, the draft trims GM values, which you can set. Well, here we have it again. Please make sure you use some uh, useful GM values. Another important thing, and uh, well, to my shame, I, I only found out, I think, six years ago. Um, the trim in bias is the difference between the draft and the uh, draft between the fore and the aft between perpendiculars, and the trim as used in SOLAS is between the fore and the aft station, the subdivision draft. So if we want to extend, for instance, the, the trim range, <coughs> um, in, the, in this example we have a subdivision length of 100 meter. Um, the trim range is plus minus half percent of the subdivision length, so that's half meter. Uh, but the value for impious is measured between the length of perpendicular, so that would be 0.4635 in this example. That's something to keep, uh, keep in mind. We have the functionality to, uh, well, generate the, the GM value um, for which the attained index will be equal to the required index. Um, that can be used if, you, if your vessel does not comply, so then you can look for a GM value for your vessel to comply, but it can also be used if your attained index is higher than the required index, because then you have a, a, how you say it, a surplus of stability. Then it can be used to determine how much can I lower my GM value, which uh, well is good for the the the, the inzetbaarheid van van of your vessel. Uh, though classification societies are not very fond of attained index being really near the required index, I can tell you. When I told about this functionality for a classification society who bought our software and I gave the training and I explained this function. They said, oh, we're not going to, uh, we're not going to accept. I said, well, why not? Yeah, well, that's too close. I want some more margin. 
Ja, yeah, I'm not going to drive a 90 on the highway when, when, when a 100 is allowed, of course. But that's, that's again, then, then you have to stand up for yourself. And you can do it. They cannot, cannot accept it because it costs. Well, um, they, 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 I'm now going to say something very mean. They calculate it with, with, with an inferior package software and and then they can't match you, match, match the same results, so then they... Is that all accepted by larger sites? I do it all the time. That, that's what I said. I mean, you you can decide how many zones or how many... Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but, but what you need to do, it, 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 it's not possible to remove those damage, uh, uh, the, those damages from, from the list and then make a new um, uh, annotation of, of your uh, attained index. Because if you remove certain damage cases, you have to recalculate stability to recalculate the probability of, of the other damage cases. So you need to do a recalculation. And then probably if you if you start doing that, then then iterate until no damage cases, until the number of damage cases uh, it's, are still stable, because then you have the maximum result. Because the, the results can can vary between if you do the first iteration, the result can be even 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 worse, then it sometimes is higher. So it, it needs a couple of iterations. So it is perfectly allowed. It might not be what they are used to, because but, but, but I have to say that they, they are learning. We're getting there. I see it's almost time, so I have to hurry a bit. Define compartment connection. I, 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 I want to do this. Um, in Pius, there are three types of compartment connections. An open compartment connection and the pipe and A-class bulkhead. And the latter only differ in name. Open connection as if there is no resistance uh, in connection and progressive flutter, flooding is considered to be instantaneous. An example, compartment E, A con uh, connected to B, uh, open connection without a critical point. Final stage of flooding, both compartments will get flooded and intermediate stages, <clears throat> if applicable, because cargo vessels don't have the, the intermediate stage flooding, uh, will be like this. I got questions last year during the opening of our office that people were, were a bit questionable about what we mean with the intermediate stages of flooding, 75, 50, and 25%. Some people thought that the compartment then actually would be filled 75%, but that will be a 50 or 75% of the situation of final flooding. So in this example, this is 100% and that is 50%. Uh, pipe and A-class bulkhead connections, um, progressive flooding is considered to may take considerable time. We're not sure. Therefore, extra intermediate stages flooding uh, are generated. And since the minimum value of SSE for each stage has to be taken, this is the worst, uh, worst case scenario. Here we have an example. An extra stage of flooding is generated where only the damaged compartment is flooded, and compartment B, well, it may take a day or whatsoever. So we've made this uh, extra intermediate stage flooding. If for this situation, for instance, the SE is zero, then the S overall SE will be zero because you have to take the minimum. So if you're not sure what kind of connection you have, uh, use the pipe. And if you use open, then your likely to uh, make a cross flooding calculations unless you can really make clear that it's that it's a massive hole and that uh, it's no objection how do we set up compartment connection if we go I've, I've made a menu with only the three compartments in this example i connect compartment b with a a is number one so it's in the row of uh, column one and if I press a uh, spacebar, I will get this menu. In this menu, on the left side, we see the connection from B to A. And on the right, we see the connection from A to B. If we want to make a two-way connection, we can uh, use all these buttons, say copy, then it will automatically copy the values. 
we can also use the copy all function, which automatically does it. Then we can select the kind of opening, open pipe or a build head, uh, and a critical point if desired. And we can enter length, breadth, height of that critical point. And finally, we can uh, let the program know, <coughs> know um, if the intermediate stage of flooding, which are gener generated, needs to be checked against the final stability criteria or standard intermediate uh, criteria. Critical points, well, quite easy, I think. If we have a critical point which stays above the damaged waterline, nothing much will happen. Um, as you can might have noticed that in this case, it's also possible to uh, select different critical points. Herbert uh, earlier told that it's only one critical point. It's not entirely true. We can make two critical points. So in this situation, the critical point from A to B will be the right critical point. From B to A will be the left critical point. Uh, and in this case, you can see that compartment B will not get flooded. As if I would have uh, modeled the critical point somewhere in the middle, just for easy, then the compartment B will get flooded. Of course, this is an example. This, this might be even better for damage stability, but that's beside that. Then we also have multiple compartment connections. We can have compartment A connected with both B and C through a pipe. Well, that's the same if, as if it was only connected with B. There's the intermediate stage of flooding where only A gets flooded. Now the same situation, but A and B are connected by means of an open connection, which means instantaneous flooding, then this stage of flooding. And I'm sorry that I'm a bit in uh, a hurry with this, but we have to round up. Um, this is a nice one. <clears throat> A is connected with B, B is connected with C. And now we get an extra stage of flooding because first we have A is damaged and the other compartments uh, are not flooded. Then B gets flooded and then C. Uh, you can imagine that this could be extended to a lot of compartments. Um, this mechanism, really nice but it means added calculation times, unfortunately. But on the other hand, it makes it, it, it gives you a lot of possibilities. Um, then finally, uh, of the tips, uh, of the problem tips and tricks, the new damage case menu, if you um, select damage cases, we can select higher or the select damage case for which we want the higher sub damages to be calculated so normally you would do this um, so you can select the whole column set it to yes and then higher sub damages as minor damages will be calculated it's also possible to <coughs> select certain damage cases as standard for loading which means that if you now enter the loading module um, this, that these two damage cases will be listed in the damage cases menu. And then together with a light, partial, and deep subdivision draft, um, you can do some further investigations on damage stability. Is that uh, including compartment collection? Yeah. Oh. That was the end of the topic tips and tricks. Um, I'm not sure how much time we still have. About one minute past, but we started a bit later on. So, anyone questions regarding the tips and tricks sessions or any general questions? Yes. If you type in the module, is it possible to have more compartment connections between two compartments? Yeah. No, you have only one. Yeah, you, you you can make a real spider web of uh, okay. so that that that, that will that it will be realistic. Let's say it that way. So you can really make the piping, say which diameter the piping has, if there are corners, as if you would make uh, a cross flooding calculations, and the 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 S, uh, SF values uh, are taken into account. So it can really calculate time it takes to another because you can imagine that for instance uh, in this case 
is this true? Shouldn't be this one filled half and then this already fit? That would be possible with the pipe heat. If you, if you, if you, if, if, let's say, if you make the definition correct with all the resistance factors, etc. But also, I'm not really the most critical point between. Yeah, if you have, have, if you have a routing of piping, it it will it will indeed take not only the two critical points, but then the whole routing of piping yeah. taking down. So it will, it's taking quite a while, um, but it will be. Uh, now I'm sorry, it sounds like, like, like I'm, I'm an American sales, but it will be amazing. It's really nice. Yeah, it's a lot of work to, to define it, and it will be a lot of calculation time. But I would like to send the first calculation to class. <laughs> Good luck! But also the heating and of the ship is an umbrella. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, 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 that's really, I think so. Yeah. I, I have a question for the uh, general on Hagdan. Yeah. Because of what you mentioned earlier, sometimes we use internal routines to go directly from uh, things to the For example, And it can happen that two subsequent frames that we create have a fairly different number of points. Maybe 30 or 50 points. Um, is that generating any kind of problem in the policy? But Subsequent frames with less points than actual with way more points. No, not not really. No. Avoid too many points. I mean, a frame with two hundred points is just not too many points, but it's not necessary. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's not. Because there was more if you have change one frame, you have to sixty, the other one in twenty. Thanks. Is there a function available to reduce the amount of points each frame of that group? I know we are finding it. There are some small functions that we have. Um, but Casimir is making a note of it, and otherwise, the because it's a question to see if that's what you made available. Because I I know the model I was talking about, all the external shapes. We also reduce the number of frames and the number of, the number of coordinates of the frames. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, it happens quite often that we're working on a model with a grain mark, and we have a grain bed and the layout, which is like an additional button. Yeah. All the buttons. And then when we go to the stability, we do details. And we run the compilations, and eventually we fine tune the old things, or even the layout to get it running well. Mm -hmm. Then we need to go back to text stability. Now we're in text stability model, so it's not reflecting the latest developments. And because we diverge the files. Yeah. What there, do you suggest to do with that? <laughs> yeah, it's difficult. Normally, typically, I always make a copy of the intact model. To be used for probability uh, calculations, but uh, the way we work is of course differently than, than most design offices. <laughs> we get files, make a calculation. We are not really designing, them. so that, that might be different. <coughs> I had a slide in my presentation, but I um, heard that that uh, option is not yet available. There will be an option in layout to select compartments which are not part of the water type <coughs> layout. So then, for instance, grain compartments could be selected as no part of the water type layout, and then you can run for this density calculation. But in general, I make uh, copies of the files, and especially because, but, but that it's also a bit different. We have unlimited number of uh, licenses. So if I need to make calculation, I make six copies, start with four sides, start with minus uh, three hundred whatsoever, and I run six calculations at the same time. So that's that's why it's more convenient for me to make a lot of copies. Of it. Um, but if you use the same model, if you're running probabilistic demonstrative calculation, you cannot use the, the model then for let's say impact uh, speed calculations. 
And um, I can't go really into detail, but um, I believe there are certain ways to copy, for instance, openings, etc., from another project to another one by means of the, the backup uh, history. But then please read in the manual how, how it specifically works, because I normally don't tend to use it. But I believe there are some functionalities for that. And otherwise, if you would have a specific question uh, for that, please send us an email. And we can try to assist with that. Uh, assist with that. Yeah. If you know already then you can just always uh the main model and then make a copy of them. So maybe different uh Sorry what would provide that in the beginning what was if you when you said well if you provide a feature that you does not the three base and for instance as fun. Oh yeah, yeah. Even if you cannot uh, simultaneously run all them and uh, help with this model, mm -hmm. if you still have one main model yeah. with everything in it, yeah. one source of information, and then you can then yeah. use it to copy it in. Uh, with every grain model that, that, that you want to have. Uh -huh. I can understand what you uh, mean. Um, well, this was then the questions. I think that's me. We have to uh, round up. Well, then I would like to thank you for your attention. Um, as said, if you experience questions by classification society, or you think, well, why is it doing something wrong or whatsoever, or you need the tips and tricks, please contact us. It's also helpful for us to get feedback from clients what they experience, uh, because. Your experience might be completely different than our experience. Then that was the end.